DNA whose genes are actively being transcribed are more likely to be in euchromatin because it should be more accessible to the RNA polymerase. Here's transcription occurring in euchromatin, but not in heterochromatin, showing nascent transcripts. We can test with deoxyribonuclease whether euchromatin contains active genes versus heterochromatin containing inactive genes. Here's an experiment. Birds' red blood cells have nuclei, unlike our erythrocytes. Our erythrocytes were produced by cells that originated in the bone marrow. They are called reticulocytes. But eventually, after the reticulocytes produce the hemoglobin and other components of the red blood cell, the nucleus is destroyed. So our red blood cells look like donut-shaped things, and they don't have a nucleus, and they function for about 60 days before the spleen takes them out of commission. But birds have nucleated red blood cells. If you take chick red blood cells from young chickens and isolate their nuclei and do a chromatin extract that yields total chromatin in a test tube, cartooned again to suggest some of it is heterochromatin, some of it is euchromatin. If you now digest this preparation with DNAs for different amounts of time, the expectation is that the euchromatin will be digested preferentially and the heterochromatin will remain behind. What if you were to now extract undigested DNA from such a digest? Well, the way in which this experiment was done was that the chromatin extract was digested with DNAs again for different times, not just completely. So what you do is you set up a test tube, you put in the chromatin and the DNAs, and after different times you pull out some of the digest extract and extract the DNA from each of those tubes that you have pulled out at time one, time two, time three, and so on. And you put a little spot of DNA in a different position on a filter shown here. Each circle represents a small drop of DNA extracted from progressively longer digested bits of red blood cell chromatin. So on the far right would be the DNA taken from the most digested chromatin. On the far left, DNA from the least digested chromatin. Make a duplicate. So you have two of these filters, and you'll see why in just a moment. The next step requires a moment of explanation. We're going to ask whether we can detect a gene for globin, the protein that is part of hemoglobin, whether we can detect the gene for globin in the chromatin digest from a red blood cell. So we need to do that by using a cloned globin gene as a probe. That means we're probing for globin genes using a known DNA sequence that we know codes for globin. Why would we do that? Well, first of all, you tag the globin so that it's now radioactive. That's what the little uh, red asterisk is supposed to tell you. So we have radioactive probe, which means we have a radioactive globin gene. What have we done? We've denatured that gene, so we have single strands. On the filter, we actually have placed the DNA in a single-stranded state. And what the denatured radioactive globin gene DNA will now do will find sequences complementary to each of the two strands in the probe and form H bonds, even on the filter, leaving then a deposit of radioactive material on the filter, which can then be detected. So we allow the probe DNA, this radioactive DNA after denaturing, to, we say, hybridize. We mean hybridizing in the sense of if the two original parent strands of DNA were artificially separated and we introduce two new strands that are potentially complementary and, and they do form H bonds, well, they've kind of made a hybrid DNA structure. So we say we're going to allow the radioactive probe DNA to hybridize to complementary sequences on the filters if they're there. And then we have to expose and develop an autoradiograph, which will tell us which of the spots is radioactive and how radioactive are the spots. So here we have our two filters. You, you don't see them at the moment, but they had the spots of DNA on them. What you're really looking at now are the pieces of film that have been placed over the two filters. And again, to orient you, the increasing time of digestion of the chromatin initially is from left to right. And the DNA has come from red blood cell chromatin that has been digested with DNAs for different periods of time, progressively towards the spots on the left. Now, if you expose and then develop the autoradiographs, this is what you're going to see. On the upper filter, we have probed it with the globin gene probe. And look what happened. The spot on the left shows the largest amount of radioactivity, which means the largest amount of globin gene in the DNA. That's the least digested. But as you look towards the right, the amount of probe that can bind to the DNA in the spots progressively more to the right goes down until you reach the relatively small amount shown at the spot on the far right. Why is that? That's because DNA's digestion for a longer time 
has managed to digest most of the euchromatin which we are proposing is the location of active genes, such as the globin gene in a red blood cell. Well, here's the control. Chickens make ovalbumin, which is egg white protein. That's made in the ovida, not in a red blood cell. So you would assume that the ovalbumin gene in a red blood cell is in heterochromatin because it's not expressed in a red blood cell, and so it should be packed up and put away, so to speak. What you would expect then is that no matter how long you digest red blood cell chromatin, there will always be a fair amount of ovalbumin gene left behind in the DNA after the digestion. And that's exactly what you see. I can tell you that when this experiment is done in the inverse, if you will, you get the expected results. Now, what do I mean? I mean, if you do the same experiment, except this time you extract chromatin from oviduct tissue, make your digests and make your filters, and then probe with the globin gene probe or the ovalbumin gene probe. This time, it's the ovalbumin gene that disappears very quickly over the time of digestion, whereas the globin gene remains roughly at the same amount in each of the digests of oviduct tissue chromatin. The conclusions, of course, are that the ovalbumin gene in the red blood cell chromatin is resistant to DNA's digestion, and that's because it is a part of heterochromatin rather than euchromatin, and likewise the globin gene DNA, which gets digested very quickly after treatment with DNAs1 of chromatin from a red blood cell, and the globin gene disappears quickly because it's active and it's in a region of chromatin that's, that is in a more open configuration and therefore more accessible to DNAs, but also in the cell again, more accessible to the enzymes of transcription.